Good afternoon guys, welcome back. In this week's episode, we're gonna be replacing a chain and sprockets, we're gonna be adjusting valves and sinking carburetors. Let's get going. So I'm quickly learning that anytime I have to do something with this bike, that is kind of a major pain because you gotta take off the fairings and the fairings are so massive that they go all the way back here, all is one piece, and then they wrap around all the way to the front end so there's quite a bit of stuff you got to take off but uh, yeah we're gonna get it today we're gonna replace uh, chain and sprockets uh, we're gonna do back sprocket we're gonna do front sprocket which involves taking all of this part off let me bring you over and show you a bunch of the stuff I've got I got a super light uh, chrome molly front sprocket this is the stock uh, tooth setup but uh, I went on the back I changed the uh, gearing on it. I went with a JT sprocket. I went with a taller gear. So this is gonna give me a lower RPM at cruising speed. We've got a DID X-ring chain, 530. And that's the uh, size that came factory, 530. And carburetor sink tool. Uh, so we can sink the carburetors. I got a spare uh, gas tank, it's a remote fuel tank, so this will allow us to run the motorcycle with the gas tank off. Got some chain lube, valve adjustment tools, 32 millimeter socket, uh, because that's what size the front sprocket nut is. I got a Motion Pro uh, cable luber, so while we have the clutch cable apart in that assembly, might as well lube the clutch cable up, because I'm sure that's never been done in the last umpteen years. And we got a PBR chain tool, which this is a breaker and a uh, set made by Motion Pro. Remember the last time, a couple episodes back, I'll put a link up there if you haven't seen the others, uh, that the clip-ons were missing some like little decorative pieces. So I got those. Uh, some more, more of the same. And I uh, got a new oil filter, Suzuki oil filter factory, uh, for when we do another oil change on it. And this is one of those little cap pieces. This one was missing, this one was in. So yeah, just don't like looking at odd stuff like that. So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking a Sharpie and I'm putting a mark on the shifting shaft and the shifting bracket, just so that when I go to put it all back together, I can line up those match marks. I drew a little diagram. That way I know where the bolts go or I take them out. So just like that, that way I won't get them all fouled up. The old memory ain't quite what she used to be. I was never actually that good anyway, so. You know, as you guys do this stuff, just take lots of pictures. I would encourage you to, um, you know, that's what I do, and, it, and I find that it helps me quite a bit. Oh yeah, look at that. See, those are all different, different lengths. See how much longer this one is than, than the one I just took out? So, that way, that way I won't get it all screwed up. So, I know exactly where they came out. Uh, I'm trying to get the sprocket, front sprocket off my motorcycle. Uh, Bob? Uh, because I'm putting a new chain and sprocket on it. Okay. Well, then let you go. Alright. If you need it, you can let me know. You got it. I love you. I love you more. Alright. You're welcome. I love you. I love you more. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Mm, bye. This is that 32 millimeter socket I picked up. So what I'm doing is, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake over here, and then apply torque on this. What? Why'd that come off so easy? That was like, not even tight. Wow, that wasn't even tight at all. Huh. I would have thought that had been a lot tighter, but maybe there's just not supposed to be a lot of torque on it. We'll have to check the torque specs when we put it back together, of course. I'm going to share a little story with you. Everything that I just showed you for materials, I paid for with my own money. This isn't a sponsored video, and I don't get paid anything for saying any of this. So the chain and sprockets and the sprocket tool I got from a company called Sprocket Center, and I ordered it through them as a complete package and a kit. Uh, I, and I got the cable lube. I got a bunch of stuff through them. And when it went time to put the chain all together, 
I couldn't figure out what I was missing. Well, come to find out, because I've never done this before, the tool is actually missing a part. So I was a little disappointed because, you know, I kind of on a timeline here and I want to get things done. So I sent him an email and said, hey, I, I need this to get taken care of. Well, not only did they take care of it, they expedited the part out to me, but the following day they called me. So within like 12 hours of them receiving the email, they called me on the phone and said, hey, you know, what's going on? We're sorry about this. But the best part about all of this is that they had no clue who I am. They don't know what I'm doing. They don't even know I have a YouTube channel. Um, the fact that they called me up and took care of this, customer service means a lot to me. So um, so I want to tell you guys, I guess, uh, I, I think when somebody does a good job, it should be known. So uh, from now on, I'll be getting all my stuff from uh, Sprocket Center. And Sprocket Center, if you're listening and you ever do want to do a sponsored video, well, hey, look me up. Those little rubber bushings that you saw, that's to help uh, dampen vibration. I ended up replacing all those too. So that's all new. And while we're right here, we might as well check the rear brake rotor torque. And the manual calls for 16.5 pounds. Not 16, not 17, 16.5. Double, triple, and quadruple check everything. All right, so there's that. Then we had a washer that went on right there. Then this nut, and I'm going to clean it up and put a little dab of blue Loctite on it. One thing I found out after I did this project was that the front original stock sprocket has like a rubber vibration dampener on it. Well, the one I put on it doesn't. So I don't know if it's going to make a big deal or not. Um, it might make it a little bit louder. I don't know. But uh, I guess time will tell. We'll find out. Hey, Colton, you going to help Papa with the motorcycle? Yeah. Are we helping Papa? Down the left. Hi, Colton. Say hi. <laughs> you blow kisses? Yeah. Motorcycle. Yeah, you want to go check it out? Yeah. The motorcycle. Vroom, vroom. So this will be the first bike that I've ever put a taller gear in, meaning that uh, when I get on the highway, it's going to tack a lot less RPMs than it used to. Well, not a lot. About 2 to 3% maybe lower than what it would tack normally. Uh, so this is the first bike. I've always put uh, a shorter gear in them so that I could take off quick and have a lot of torque. But uh, I guess that's a sign I'm getting older now. So what I'm doing now, guys, is I'm just taking a... I got a dial. See it? Yeah, focus is real good. Um, I got a dial indicator, and I'm just matching how far I'm pressing on this new link, uh, this master link. I'm just measuring how far the original ones have been pressed on, and I'm just trying to make them the same. You know, I don't want to overpress it. So I'm just going a little bit at a time and then measuring it. 19. Okay, so, so they vary a little bit. We got 19 on a factory link, 28. And my master link that I just did is now what, 32. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah. Depends on how you measure it. Twenty-nine. Yeah. Twenty-three. We're gonna call that good right there. I'm gonna squash that right there. Yeah. That's good. Now, back in the day, the younger me would have been fiddle farting around with that. Uh, dial indicator for hours until I had the link precisely exact to the thousandths of all the others. You get older, it doesn't matter as much. We've already got the washer on it, right there. And the manual calls for Loctite and 83 pounds of torque. I'll do the same thing that I did before, and that's press on the brake on the other side. So right after I finished up this, I went on to adjusting the valves. Now, I didn't get that on video, but all the valves were out of spec. They were all tight. 
Uh, I'm guessing that whereas the plugs hadn't been changed in 10 years, that the valves hadn't been adjusted either. So uh, I got the valves all adjusted and all back together. Now it's time to balance the carbs. I've got a fan blowing on the front of the motor so it doesn't overheat. I've got my remote fuel bottle and the carb synchronizer hooked up. the needle on this carburetor to match the one on the left. So now that I got the first three carburetors pretty well in a line with one another, now I'm going to take the fourth carburetor and make it try to match the third one. to do now is put it back together and take it out for a ride but I think I did all right and I'm pretty happy with the work it's pretty satisfying stay tuned next week where hopefully we can begin working back on this again I'll see you then stay safe thanks guys have a good day if this is something that you like maybe consider subscribing hitting that like button see you guys come, come, come.